Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 10. In this video, the puzzle solving technique called W Wing will be discussed. What we consider an advanced technique is a puzzle solving technique that is generally more complicated. To get good at advanced techniques requires a little more practice in recognizing and applying the technique. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. As with many Sudoku solving techniques, the process of finding a W wing in a Sudoku puzzle requires patience. We will begin by showing all the cells having exactly two possible candidates highlighted. Once we find a pair of cells with the same two candidates, we will begin the process of determining if we found a W wing pattern in the puzzle and use it to eliminate non-possible candidates. Consider the first cell having a pair of possible candidates at row 2, column 1. This cell has a 3 and 5 as possible candidates. We scan the rest of the puzzle looking for cells having the exact same two possible candidates. We find one cell having a 3-5 pair, but these two numbers cannot be part of a W wing because they are in the same house. We are looking for a pair of cells having the same two possible numbers but in different houses. Next we look at the cell on row 2, column 3 having an 8 and 9 pair of possible candidates. We find another cell with the same pair of possible candidates, but again this is not a W wing because the two cells are in the same house. We can skip the rest of the cells further down row 2 because they've already been tested. Next we look at the cell on row 3, column 2, which has a 3-7 as possible candidates. We find two other cells having a 3-7 pair as possible candidates in the puzzle. The cell on row 4, column 2 cannot be part of a W wing because it is in the same house with the cell we are currently testing. So we now focus on the two cells currently being highlighted. These two cells could be part of a W wing pattern. We will call these two cells the endpoints of our W wing. Next we identify the kill zone highlighted in light red. The kill zone is composed of cells that are in the houses shared by both endpoints. Let's consider each cell in our kill zone. We can ignore cells already having chosen values or givens. In the kill zone, we have both 3 and 7 as possible candidates, so we will have to test if we have a W wing in two different ways. We are now going to move to the next step in the process of finding a W wing pattern. We will try both W wing possibilities, but for now we will stick with the 7 candidate as the anchor candidate in the two endpoints, as shown in dark green highlight. With a W wing, we are only going to be able to remove one of the shared possible candidates from any cell in the kill zone. We are going to target the two sevens as possible kill candidates in the kill zone if we are successful in finding a W wing pattern. The anchor candidate of the pair will determine which number candidate gets killed in the kill zone. We will show the traversing number or chaining number with a dark blue highlight. The chaining number is currently the possible 3 candidate and is now highlighted in the two endpoint cells. What we're looking to do to complete the W wing pattern is find exactly 4 traversing cells or chaining points. We are going to traverse from one endpoint to the other endpoint within the puzzle. What we mean by traversing will make more sense once we find an actual W wing, so please be patient. It is important to know what is not a W wing pattern as well as to know when we have found one. This is the first traversing path we choose to take from one cell to the next. The arrows show how we traverse from one cell to the next to get from one endpoint to the other. The path is composed of five cells including the endpoints. For this to be a valid W wing pattern, there has to be exactly four cells in the path including the two endpoints. So this first path is not a valid W wing pattern. There may be more than one path from one endpoint to the other, so we have to consider all the possible paths. Here is another path from one endpoint to the other. This path is not a W wing pattern because there are too few cells in the path. There are only three cells making up this path when we need exactly four in the path for a valid W wing pattern. 
So at this point, we are confident there is no W wing with these two pair of possible candidate numbers and using 7 as the anchor point. Next, we will continue to use the same pair, but we will switch which number will be the anchor point of the W wing. And at this point, we'll be targeting the number 3 candidates in our kill zone. We are now traversing with the 7 candidate. However, there is no path along the possible 7s, creating a valid W wing pattern. All the paths are either too short or too long. The path must be exactly 4 cells, including the endpoints. We are now confident there are no W wings with these two pair of cells. It seemed like we were close, but the path lengths we were forced to traverse were not W wing valid. Next, we will consider the cell at row 3, column 3 having a 7-9 as possible candidates. We do find a matching pair. Both pairs are now highlighted. Next, we identify the kill zone of the two endpoints. Since only the 7 candidate is showing up in the kill zone, we set 7 as the anchor candidate in the two endpoints. The target 7s are shown in the kill zone, and we will use the 9 candidate to traverse the puzzle. This time we find a W wing with exactly four cells in the traversing path, including the endpoints. Before we remove the non-possible seven candidates from the kill zone, let's consider how the W wing logic works. There are five possible ways the logic could work. Consider a possibility there is a seven in row three, column three, shown in red. This means the two possible seven candidates in our kill zone cannot be seven. For the second possibility, consider the possibility there is a 7 in row 7, column 1. Again, this means the two possible 7 candidates in our kill zone cannot be 7. The third possibility to consider is the possibility there is a 7 in both rows as shown in red. Again, this means the two possible 7 candidates in our kill zone cannot be 7. The fourth possibility to consider is the possibility there is a 9 in row 3, column 3 shown in red. We must now follow the traversal path. A 9 in row 3, column 3 means there can't be a 9 in row 3, column 8. This then means there must be a 9 in row 7, column 8. And if there's a 9 in row 7, column 8, there must be a 7 in row 7, column 1, as shown in red. Again, there is a 7 in row 7, column 1. This means the two possible 7 candidates in our kill zone cannot be 7. And the final fifth possibility to consider is the possibility there's a 9 in row 7, column 1, shown in red. This means if there's a 9 in row 7, column 1, there can't be a 9 in row 7, column 8. And if there is no 9 in row 7, column 8, there must be a 9 in row 3, column 8. And if there's a 9 in row 3, column 8, there must be a 7 in row 3, column 3, as shown in red. This time we traverse the path backwards. Again, because there's a 7 in row 3, column 3, this means the two possible seven candidates in our kill zone cannot be seven. All five possibilities resulted in the two possible seven candidates in our kill zone to be non-possible candidates. Also note, for this to be a valid W wing, there has to be exactly two possible nine candidates in the house making up row three. And for this to be a valid W wing, there has to be exactly two possible nine candidates in the house making up column eight. And one more for this to be a valid W wing pattern, there has to be exactly two possible nine candidates in the house making up row seven. If there are more than two possible nine candidates in these houses, then the W wing logic will not work properly. As with all Sudoku solving techniques, if you are not sure you found the pattern, you should always test out your logic before removing any non-possible candidates. We remove the non-possible candidates from the puzzle. We immediately find a naked single. We choose the value for the naked single, and we immediately find another naked single. We choose the value for the naked single. We could go further, but the puzzle is practically solved. As you can see for this puzzle, the W wing pretty much solved the whole puzzle. At first you might be thinking the W wing is an odd pattern that will not happen very often. However, in harder Sudoku puzzles, W wings can occur more than once in the same puzzle. 
And like all Sudoku puzzle solving techniques, once you see it several times, you will be able to spot W wings much quicker. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. Once again, we begin the process of looking for a W wing. We are currently highlighting all the cells having a pair of two possible candidates. We are going to work our way from top to bottom, from left to right, checking to see if each cell is the endpoint of a W wing. As you look for W wings, working your way down from row to row, it starts to go quicker. This is because you only have to test a pair of cell endpoints once, going from upper row to lower row. You don't have to do the same test for the same pair of cells going from the lower row back to the upper row. We start with the cell on row 1, column 4. This cell does not have any other matching cells in the puzzle. Next, we move to the cell on row 1, column 6, which has a possible 6 and 8 as candidates. This cell does not have any matching cells in the puzzle. Next, we look at the cell on row 2, column 6, which has a 7 and 9 as possible candidates. This cell does have a matching pair but they are in the same house. Having the two endpoints of our W wing in the same house prevents us from having a kill zone. Row two, column seven is next, but this cell has no matching pair. Same thing with row two, column eight cell, there is no matching pair. So we move to the cell on row three, column one, which has a five and six as possible candidates. This cell has two pairs in the puzzle. The first pair doesn't work because it's in the same house and there would be no kill zone. The second pair looks like it may have a chance. We even have a kill zone highlighted in red. However, the first set of anchor candidates results in traversal paths that are too short or too long. The second set of anchor points also results in traversal paths that are too short or too long. So the cell in row 3, column 1 is not the endpoint of a W wing. We now move to the cell on row 3, column 2. This cell also has two pairs, but the first pair is in the same house, so no W wing here. However, the second pair does look promising. We have a possible 5 candidate in our kill zone, so 5 will be the number we will use for the two anchor points. And we do find a W wing this time. The traversal path is shown. Before we delete the non-possible 5 candidate in our kill zone, let's verify the logic. Again, there are 5 possibilities for the logic to test. The first test is when there's a 5 in the cell on row 3, column 2. This means the possible 5 candidate in our kill zone is not possible. The second test is when there's a 5 in the cell on row 4, column 9. This also means the possible 5 candidate in our kill zone is not possible. The third test is when there's a 5 in both endpoint cells of our W wing. This also means the possible 5 candidate in our kill zone is not possible. The fourth test is when there's a 7 in the cell on row 3, column 2. We traverse the path, there must be a 5 cell on row 4, column 9. This means the possible 5 candidate in our kill zone is not possible. And the fifth test is when there's a 7 in the cell on row 4, column 9. We traverse the path backwards, and there must be a 5 in the cell on row 3, column 2. Again, this means the possible 5 candidate in our kill zone is not possible. So now, after testing all 5 possibilities, we are now confident we have found a valid W wing pattern, and we can eliminate the non-possible candidate from our kill zone. This example turned out to be extraordinary in that there are actually two valid W wings using the same two endpoints. Here is the second valid W wing pattern and its traversal path which is different than the first W wing. We remove the non-possible candidate. Before we begin testing, please make sure to click on the link below and make a generous donation so we can continue making DX Sudoku videos. 
Time to test what you have learned. Consider this Sudoku in progress. Pause the video and find the W wing before continuing. If you were unsuccessful, we have identified the two endpoints making up the W wing. Pause the video again and identify the kill zone, target candidates to delete, the anchor candidates, and the chaining path from one endpoint to the other. Here is the solution. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. Pause the video and find the W wing before continuing. If you were unsuccessful, we have identified the two endpoints making up the W wing. Pause the video again and identify the kill zone, target candidates to delete, the anchor candidates, and the chaining path from one endpoint to the other. Here is the solution. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. Pause the video and find the W wing before continuing. If you were unsuccessful, we have identified the two endpoints making up the W wing. Pause the video again and identify the kill zone, target candidates to delete, the anchor candidates, and the chaining path from one endpoint to the other. Here is the solution. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. Pause the video and find the W wing before continuing. If you were unsuccessful, we have identified the two endpoints making up the W wing. Pause the video again and identify the kill zone, target candidates to delete, the anchor candidates, and the chaining path from one endpoint to the other. Here is the solution. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. Pause the video and find the W wing before continuing. If you were unsuccessful, we have identified the two endpoints making up the W wing. Pause the video again and identify the kill zone, target candidates to delete, the anchor candidates, and the chaining path from one endpoint to the other. Here is the solution. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. Pause the video and find the W wing before continuing. If you were unsuccessful, we have identified the two endpoints making up the W wing. Pause the video again and identify the kill zone, target candidates to delete, the anchor candidates, and the chaining path from one endpoint to the other. Here is the solution. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. Pause the video and find the W wing before continuing. If you were unsuccessful, we have identified the two endpoints making up the W wing. Pause the video again and identify the kill zone, target candidates to delete, the anchor candidates, and the chaining path from one endpoint to the other. Here is the solution. Please support DXadoku so we can continue making DXadoku training videos. To make a donation, click on the DXadoku channel link below. Then click on the Donate to DXadoku button to make a donation with PayPal or credit card. Thank you for your generous donation and support. This completes the Exodoku training video number 10. Thank you for watching.